I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Job. In the 11th chapter of Job, we see the response of one of Job's friends to Job's afflictions. And of course, you understand that his three friends that uh, came in order to give comfort to him, uh, first of all, they didn't give much comfort to him, but they accused him, and he felt that accusation very clearly. They had a different understanding of God and the world that God created than what Job had. And much of the world's wisdom and philosophy about suffering and affliction we find in the words of Job's friends. Now in the 11th chapter of uh, this particular passage, there is a, uh, a, 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 there's a man by the name of Zophar who is speaking to Job, and he makes this statement, and it, it should shock us who know Christ. And if it doesn't shock us, we have uh, an issue that we need to resolve in our minds about the gospel that uh, is very important. But here's what he says. Now, this is from the New American Standard translation. Some other translations translate it a little bit differently. But in the New American Standard, it makes this statement. Know then, these are the words of Zophar, know then that God forgets a part of your iniquity. Let that sink in for a moment. Does God forget a part of your iniquity? Now, in human experience, very often we have, we have come to understand forgiveness as God forgetting and not bringing to account all of our sins. But does God really forget that? Is that really a proper understanding of who God is? If God is truly a holy and just God, then he can't overlook sin. If he is truly holy and just, then the sin that you and I do has to find some resolution in atonement. Now, we who know Christ recognize that he bore that atonement, he bore that penalty for us, and that's right, and that's proper for us to put our trust in him. But God doesn't just by fiat, overlook that. If he did, he wouldn't be God. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 3 that Christ died that God may be just and justify those who are sinners. You see, the issue is how can a just God allow us who are sinful into his presence? He can't look upon sin. Sin is something that is, uh, that is so violating his character that he has to find, uh, he has to turn away from it, he has to deny the presence of sin in him, uh, or in his presence. And so, and so that's why Christ had to die for us, so that the just for the unjust would make an end of the penalty of sin so that we who are guilty would be declared righteous on the basis of Christ. And that's why Paul says in Romans 3, verse 26, that he might be just and the justifier of those who believe. So if God were to simply overlook sin without, without the penalty, without an atonement being made, he could not be a just God. Justice demands that if, if, if sin has happened, a penalty for that sin must be exacted. And that's, of course, what Jesus did. But, it's, but your, your forgiveness and my forgiveness is not because God just overlooks that. He doesn't forget it. He has atoned for it in Christ. Yet the world around us, as they look at the forgiveness that we have as believers, 
they get the idea, a false idea, but they get the idea that God just overlooks that sin. And that's a false understanding of the God that we serve. The God we serve is perfectly and infinitely holy and just. And in order to preserve that infinite purity that is in him, he has to atone for your sin and mine. And so, of course, Jesus died in our place and for our sins so that we might be able to come and worship him and adore him and be in his presence forever. But it isn't just simply because he overlooks it. It's because he's atoned for it. And there's a significant difference. Zophar is, is expressing the opinion of many in our world. And that opinion is wrong. God does not overlook sin. Not at all. Every sin must be atoned for. Father, we want to thank you for the grace that you've extended to us. I praise you and thank you for the blood of Christ, for the death of Jesus that satisfies your wrath, that satisfied the, um, the, the penalty that each of us deserved. Lord, help us to understand this. Give to us insights and discernment and help us to be wise as we confront this idea throughout the society in which we live and give to us the grace to respond as you would have us respond. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day now.